Well, it looks like we're recording. Chris and I, Therapy Outside the Box, we are hopping on for an, part two of probably a really long conversation that will extend out. <laughs> Might even a need a, a part three someday. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Shannon. Hi. I'm so happy to be with you today. We weren't talking before this. We were not talking before no, this. I'm not pretending not. like you just hopped on. Nobody should think that. <laughs> oh, it's just so funny. You and I. It's like, okay, let's be transparent and have just the most mystical conversation. At 9 a.m. on a Sunday. I know. <laughs> are you Wait, ready? Are you, you same time zone? I don't I'm, I'm 9 a.m. Are you, you ready? Are. Okay. This? this is so, this is, yeah, this is going to be something. So let's go to, we're going to church. So who's the preacher and who's the congregant? All right. I think we're going to, I think we're going to dance. There you go. Yeah. yeah. No, no hierarchy. Right. Right. Well, others, others from beyond are with us. And so we will. No doubt. We will be with those. Well, well, that's what it's all about these days for at least people like us, weirdos like us. Right. Exactly. Got to embrace it. You got it, the whole thing. Yeah. The multidimensionality. No doubt. Man, oh. it's funny timing because we just had some um, friends over last night who are, mm -hmm. uh, you know, totally woo woo tribe members. You may even follow my friend, Olivia Estelle oh, okay. um, on Instagram. She's a intuitive astrologer, intuitive reader, you know, medium. And uh, her husband is a holistic chiropractor and integrative health guy. Um, they're just magical people. And so we spent probably four and a half hours just deep into the rabbit hole. So I, I, I'm already there. I'm already down at the bottom of the rabbit hole. Right. Yeah. right that's exactly how my really close friends are and that's just all yeah. that you know me and my husband you know talk about and stuff and so it's just so natural no so yeah so we're <clears throat> we're at in the rabbit hole are you where'd you land let's just pick uh, up from there gosh where did we land i think we landed on just talking about whether our cosmic culture friends um are aware of the intricacies of kind of the 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 real weirdness going on in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, what led us to that was you know, was talking about DARPA and Davos and World Economic Forum and all right. that kind of stuff, which I don't think we really want to get terribly too into here today. But you know, just it flowed out of that. I mean, we yeah. would have wanted to talking about that anyway, but. Uh, because Olivia channels a, a lot of these cultures and, mm -hmm. them, you know, I'm connecting with those, those guides as well as are you, I believe. So, yeah, well, you know, just came out of uh, uh, thinking about, you know, the history of just, just contact and abduction experiences throughout history mm -hmm. and um, the, the data about cosmic culture, uh, you know, showing up at, um, nuclear silos and shutting down missiles and shutting down whole uh, Ooh, oh. army bases and all that. Yeah. And so we were talking about like how much is, is observed and known and understood. And we just mm -hmm. wondered from that prior theme, are they well aware of all that's going on, you know, mm -hmm. deep, deep into the recesses of uh, all that's going on now? Yeah. That's you know? such an interesting uh, lens to kind of, play with and look through and just, yeah. and just the, I hear like the undertone of discernment, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 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 I mean, I think, I think everyone's trying to figure out kind of what is true in this post-truth society. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we could just like leave that right there. You know, I mean, who the hell knows what is going on and the plot seems to thicken all the time. And post facts or post facts, post rationality. Right. Right. So all the more reason to for anyone that's so inclined to be doing whatever possible to sharpen their own discernment and intuition, mm -hmm. their own inner knowing, to be as in self as possible and connected to whatever sources is, is, you know, of their understanding. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and to be able to discern that it's extreme uh, 3D work, um, like nervous system work. Um, because I work with so many folks who 
feel like they're channeling highest guidance or even their highest self. But if you're stuck in a park or in a trauma response and you don't have those levels of discernment, that's that's ultimately can get someone a little bit off track, you know? Totally. So, yeah. I yeah. mean, even if we're really pretty situated in, in self and larger mm -hmm. self, connected with higher self and all that, I mean, we can still bump into things that are not true and not of the highest and holiest love and light uh, spectrum. All the time. All yeah. the time. They're going to get in. <laughs> all the time. Every, like, like all of the time, truly, yeah. all the time. Yeah, you, you just expand more and more, and it's, it's, uh, it can get, get to be a little tricky. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. No doubt. I mean, I had it happen last weekend in a sit mm -hmm. of mine. I think you and I texted about it maybe briefly or something. Yeah. But, you know, I, I went about my work as usual, my sort of initiation, spirit connection work, and and everything felt totally normal until I started doing my discernment process of discovering mm -hmm. who is with me yeah, and, wh and what is the nature and purpose of the particular mm -hmm. connection today. Yeah. And what I got was, was raised a flag. Yep. And then then there was a second flag and then i said okay wait slow down and i basically asked the magic question is who is with me today of a representative of and aligned with highest and holiest love and light spectrum of christ consciousness and there was mm -hmm. a pause and then i got a no and then i got like a sinking feeling in my heart yeah. so i knew right away time to mm -hmm. get rid of this and reset and so long story short after I took a break and, you know, just sort of regrouped and got back into self and tapped in again, mm -hmm. I asked what I could think to ask about how and why, you know, did I leave an opening somehow mm -hmm. or whatever. And basically what I came away with was, you know, it was just, it was just a test of your discernment yep. and a test of whether you would, you know, uh, be tempted to invite in uh you know a gift that would be ego inflating or impress people or whatever yeah that, that was the first thing that that what when it was communicated that that was the purpose of the visit i was like that that ain't right mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not a highly involved uh offering right yes yeah 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 i can so relate to that because it does happen over and over and it is tests there there are there are tests to discern so you can learn because you have to go back and and uh learn what happened what happened there right um and i am it's such a for me it's such a humbling experience uh over and over and over again like a surrendering all over again even when you know you're you think you know right totally right yeah the more you think you know the more you don't you know exactly. you exactly right right so but yeah. yeah i had something last week too just like parallel to you um the i was cleaning up i tend to i have been cleaning up some work of some shamans um yeah. when folks come to me and because it's not there's just a lack of trauma informed and i'm not not saying all shamans i'm not there are wonderful and amazing very gifted that's not what i'm saying yeah yeah my like you how we work together is the the trauma the the psychology meets the spirituality and it's the serving of, of both and i work with energy and guides and other right. other light beings and all of it together yeah and so this might be fun for people to know is is uh people aren't really aware of when they utilize plant medicine that there are beings and other energies uh, and I come from it from a place of um, compassionate release. You and I both do compassionate spirit releasement yeah. kind of in a similar fashion. And so I'm not going to even get into like all of yeah. that because right. um, I'm operating from a place of love and forgiveness because right. these entities and spirits, they get lost and confused and... Right. Right. We're not yeah. trying to be uh, old school Catholic exorcists. Here. Exactly. It doesn't, it's not even about that. Um, and so when working with someone, um, just not all of the energies were cleared. And I 
was picking up on so much and I sped through the process and and even to the point where I sped through, I'm like, this isn't fully complete and this is going to take a while, like past the point of our session, mm. which is tricky because it was just, there was a lot here and I went into it a little bit. I was playing a little bit and mm. I, I found my limits, Chris. Yeah. Got a little I humbled found, there. <laughs> I found an edge. Let's just say that. And, uh, you know, later on, not even later on, I immediately knew and I was like, okay, I'm going to deal with this. And uh, we were, I was with my family and we were like on the road, we were picking up a puppy, we were driving hours and there was like energies within. I felt like this heart space, the poking. And I was like, okay, these energies are now within me. My, the, the nature of my thoughts were not self. And I knew, and I was like, okay, it was other. It was other. Right. And I was not paying attention to it. I was like, I'm going to be with you in a moment. And when I can access, you know, a little bit more self and, sure. but I was exhausted and I didn't want to deal with it, but I had to, because as I tried to go to sleep, <laughs> I was like, I'll just deal with it tomorrow. <laughs> as I tried to go to sleep, yeah oh no like that wow. when you when you traverse into the astral because i get a lot of information as i change over um anyways oh, okay. um yeah. disincarnate spirits um folks right. that have crossed through suicide um mm. spirits that are tethered to the land a lot of uh, multi-dimensional stuff i'm so aware of all of that as i as i because i when i go to sleep i still go to sleep with my my squad <laughs> yeah okay okay um because i will sometimes attend mystery schools and to get there and come back fully with with you know what i what i left with <laughs> oh okay yeah nothing extra um i'm very discerning of that and right. so it got dark really fast like like yeah. the, the energies were dark and typically this was more my shamanic side. So typically I just experience it with energy and, and it's flowing, but I had to be with the underworld and these energies. And it was, ugh. Mm. it was, ugh. yeah, but it was for my teaching and for my own humbling of like, listen here. Right. <laughs> and so after the energies were removed and released and, and sent back to where where they are going next through discernment and guides and 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 my process then going to sleep and in the morning meditating on the lessons and working with a couple different masters um as to like hey <laughs> hey teach me mm -hmm. um, what what went on and again getting the guidance of um yeah. you went too fast this is actually how you need to go about this process um and uh you know right. slow down uh, mm -hmm. yeah and so it was all of that and i was just i'm i'm always shown and feel and, and it's always very compassionate and um yeah, and so I met a couple different um, teachers that I hadn't been working with because they change, as you know, they change, and so they had other things to to teach me, and so. Yeah, and you mean in in spirit form, spirit teaching. Yeah. yeah, and it always is reflected too in the three D for me. I have my own guidance and <clears throat> elders and things like that. Um, it's always right. like it's always like in a grounded really way. It's very, par my process is very parallel. Um, and I know where to like, even when someone will say something like they're not like my elder or teacher, but when someone says, and I can feel it, that's like spirit, like maybe it's a phrase oh, yeah. or a message and I'm like, okay, thank you. Um, sure. For me. Right. If, if we're open to that, then everyone is our guru. Exactly. No one and everyone. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly um and so that's just how my process goes and but that was uh for me that was um that was new um because i'm often i'm not it was very shamanic where it was like overcome i'm seeing hearing feeling all this darkness and all of the that you know they wanted to tell me stuff 
right? And I'm like, <laughs> I don't work that way. Like, I love your story and you're moving through. <laughs> so, right. So you're really, you're really getting into psychopomp, psychopompery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> if, if that's a plural. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have folks contact me. I'm crossing folks over um, okay. a lot of it. Yeah. It's stuff that's just. Yeah. And it's so, happening more or less spontaneously for you, right? You're, you haven't set out to like, I'm going to usher souls on from their stuck places. Me. No. Yeah. No, it's because I'm aware of um, through animism and through my own culture that I'm aware of um, land contracts. Right. And right. Um, things that have happened on this land. And I'm in communication with um, some of my uh, indigenous ancestral lineages um, mm -hmm. that I'm aware, really, really acutely aware of like nature spirits uh, and things like that. And I'm very dedicated to intergenerational ancestral healing because yeah. I have a lot of different cultures within my physical form. And um, part of my reason that I'm here is to kind of clean up what some of the cultures within my own lineages have done and created. And so it's yeah. part of, it's part of my service. Um, yeah. that is, that is, um, I never really speak about. Well, I guess you are now a little bit anyway. Yeah. And there are, there are so many. Time for that? Is it time for that for you to like, I'm feeling that I've been feeling that from you. Like it's yeah. time to really just sort of keep opening up. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of because, out there what you're here to yeah. do, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, because it's really misunderstood and it was coming through my ancestry and recovering some of that because I come from my grandmother is if she were public, she would be one of the world's most gifted psychics and um indigenous celtic um mm. humans that that it's ever known she she so so when these things started really my family and my maternal lines this is this has been happening since i was five yeah and in my maternal line um this is just part of uh the the medicine women in, in my family because we are indigenous we are um celtic we are african we are all of these we are from like the we i even have like egyptian mesopotamian middle wow. eastern asian like all of these energies within right and it was connecting with my celtic um those those sorts of ancestry and the indigenous where things just started opening up even more yeah and around like in my late so this has been happening at five and then I had a big leap at the end of my twenties and I kept going into these initiations through my health. Right. Um, like near death experiences just with my health yeah. and to the point where upon my full awakening, I contacted my grandmother and I said, grandma, what is this? I know, you know, yeah. and she had never told anyone, but I had known. And she said, honey, I, what I, I, my grandma doesn't watch TV and I've always been like, what's going on here? And she's like, honey, when I watch TV, like the news and there's someone missing, she goes, I know where they're at. Mm. I've always known where they're at. Wow. She goes in our family when like she comes from, um, her father, my, my great grandpa was a farmer. And so, uh, she said when the women in her family, like if the cows or animals or someone was missing, they would contact someone in my family to, to locate them. Yeah. Got it. My mother is the same way. Um, and as back as I can like see it's been this way. Right. And so my, yeah so yeah it's, it's in me and so yeah. it's here and everyone in my family has had to shut it down because they didn't have the support and resources and quite honestly they would probably be institutionalized or yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah labeled yeah labeled as something heavily medicated and mm -hmm. um i'm the first one in my family and it was have working with some of my own ancestors from beyond they mm -hmm. are very adamant they're like you are here <laughs> to teach yeah 
so it's really honoring my own lineage that I'm coming forward through through my ancestors that are that are with me. Right. Um that that I want I I'm I just I want to. I want I want to say I want to share like who I really am and what well, we're capable of. I think you have to. You, you have know, to. It's 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 your decision as to timing and how much, when, and where, and why, but you have yeah. to, otherwise you're just denying, you know, the whole lineage, <laughs> the whole ancestry of all this giftedness and information. But yeah, clearly it's it's what you're here to do. So yeah. it's time, to, you're leveling up to the next, uh, exactly. next, next expansion. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, because they heal too, you know, through through right. my through my healing and me stepping up. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Absolutely. So I feel very connected to that, and that's that's my intention is to speak about it, just in the honor of um, ancestral healing, even even just with that as my intention. Hundred percent. I love yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Neat. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me about this. Uh, what did you say? You're retired shaman elder is she like he oh she, uh, oh yes is that your main teacher and for how long i'm curious i've had several so i've always had mentors um uh, i grew up um lower like lower income and no one in my family system had ever gone to school like college and so i always have had long-term elders so i have one elder spiritual and career um that i've been with for like 12 years Another one that I have been with for for ten years, and she's indigenous, and she's a counselor. They're all counselors that are like, that are like us, yeah. that are open, right, to to the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but this this one that came into my life when I was, um, there's been every couple of years I am faced with the decision of do I get licensed in the state? Oh yeah. <laughs> do I get? And every couple of years, it's always a no, um, because of the reasons that. Are pretty apparent like i don't want to pathologize people um right. my right. ancestors would just they would be pissed <laughs> um yeah. and but but it was in seeking and expanding and getting really curious as i was very aware of like what i'm here to do i'm like there are there has to be more people like me that are further along or more yeah. aligned so when i was looking for um who to share a physical physical practice with I'm very, I'm very intentional. I found a couple of people that I was like, if I'm going to do this, potentially, would they be my supervisor and be, you know, so I was very intentional about that. Yeah. And at the same time, this, this therapist in town is reaching out to me for, for some help with their health. So it was in meeting of just like that opened up a friendship. So she was towards the end of her career. And so she is, um, she's a shaman, she's a trauma therapist and she's retired. Right. Um, I'm not going to say her name because she is doing her thing. Um, yeah. Publicly. Um, but she uh, came over from Northern Europe. And so her lineages match a little bit of mine, her, her, and, and she was, I think a doctor there. And so she was initiated through her family lineage um and they were like kind of like um nomads hmm. so that so they're part of that lineage where they're um in the upper european like romania siberia serbia like those those areas the heart of shamanism i mean exactly, period, exactly. Right? Yeah. yes for a period and yeah. so she was initiated through her family and her and I, we've just spent some time together and just as colleagues and friends and, you know, she, we are so aligned with some things and she's very connected with my daughter. My daughter is on the path, truly what I'm stepping into to really honor is so I can guide her because she is out of this world gifted. Yeah. Um, and the shaman had spent a past life with my daughter and she was deeply oh, wow. connected with my daughter. Yeah. And so um, I brought my daughter in to meet her and we spent like a day at her garden. She has a lot of medicinal herbs and just kind of, you know, just kind of opening the space with no intention, just just connection, um, just growing our friendship. And and I, I guess because of that past connection, it, this was a remembering, right? It was a deep remembering. Um, 
and I, I was discerning. I went and I checked um, some of my lineage. There was some crossing over of some of uh, where my family had uh, been and uh, where her family was. Um, because with, with shamanism, you want to have it passed down through the authentic nature of being initiated and having uh, training that comes through um, lineages in which are, uh, you know, appropriate for you. And it was just the levels of discernment that were on both of our ends that were like, yes. Yeah. But, but I have some, uh, some, as I've done my own work, there's um, some things that I'm healing still, right? Like I have complex trauma. I right. have like my, the person I am today is unrecognizable to what I've lived through, what my nervous system oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah. Better. And uh, I reached out to her and um, I just said, would you would you be open to uh, help um, helping me process through some things? I've got some sticky parts and um, that I'm aware of, but I trust you and I quite frankly want to speed up this process. And uh, I want to also, when this is done, learn from you. And at the same time, because it's just both and it's just for both of us. Right. Yeah. And so um, I hired her like I'm like, we're friends, but I'm paying you. Um, yeah. Please coach me and guide me. And so it's right. um, it's really I beautiful. Chris. It can it's, totally be done when it's when it's aligned and meant to be. And yeah, right. It's, not, it's so it's so beautiful. And um, she operates just from this this highest level where I I have to work with someone like her because she has this higher level of discernment that's helping me connect the dots between like what is what I'm picking up on that just doesn't make cognitive sense and what's really here shamanically. And so for me, that's such a deep, deep, like I was recently in a car accident and I'm at a place where I'm like, thank you. Thank you that I was nearly once again, almost, almost wasn't here anymore, but I'm just, out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm so appreciative that it happened. Yeah. Right. Yes. Well, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. And didn't you say to me that you felt like mm, that? How did you put it? Like you, you, you took one for the team on that. In that yes. accident, or oh, there's such a yes. So that was that. Okay. So in my lineage, we have really, really deep precognition. Yeah. Through dreams and through non-ordinary states. Um, which means I see things uh, very early. Like I saw the pandemic. <laughs> I've seen uh, um, things that are unexplainable that that end up happening. Right, um, right, right. I see a lot of things in my dreams and, and I discern every morning what is what. It's a whole yeah. thing that I go through every day yeah, yeah. in the morning. Um, uh -huh. And so, so when I was going through a big leap in my... Uh, in my awakening uh, journey, it was towards the, my late, my mid to late twenties. And um, I had, I was dating and with like a long-term partner who um, really deeply understood what was happening with me. <laughs> and- um, It's a know, little unusual for being in our early twenties, isn't it? Right? In our early twenties, it was yeah. surprising to both of us uh, yeah. how deeply we connected to that. It was such a soul connection, he and I. And uh, it was upon the crossing over of his mother that I was um, able to start to communicate with her oh, and, right. give, and give him and messages and things like that. And that surprised us both. And he was actually able to pick up on a lot of things as well that were beyond this world. And why I'm telling you this information was that um, our partnership ended. We, I were, he's just one of the greatest humans ever. It's just, it just, it just ended, right? Like, it go further than it did. It, yeah, it just didn't. We were together for seven years and yeah. uh, he's just a, a beautiful being. And um, we remained and to this day, like friends, like, he was my best friend before and um mm -hmm. to the point where we um i was having dreams and um i shared something with him because it felt very urgent that i share it with him even though i didn't understand why mm -hmm. so i had this dream 
uh, I, and I kept having this dream and it was very urgent that I tell him this dream. We were broken up and moved on and I'm just like, hey, I've got a weird text that I'm, I have to share with you. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm mm -hmm. saying I, I have this dream of this this um, this really black sports car and someone's driving it and it feels very connected to you. And um, this car rolls over and the end of the dream, it, it wasn't finished. It was a it was a timeline that. Oh, wow. I'm just getting something right now. Uh, okay, Thank you, Chris, for holding space for me in this process. I know what you're doing and I love you for it. <laughs> So um, I'm seeing this car being suspended in a timeline. It's not finished, but how the how it's moving is this person doesn't live. There's no way that this person can live. Right. So I saw this and I said he had a black car, but it didn't look anything like his his car. Yeah. And um, I said, I, I need I need to tell you this. And I'm 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 being told that I have to tell you this. And um, yeah. thank you for listening. Yeah. A couple seconds later, after this text or phone call, I can't remember which it was. He sends me a picture and he because he's confirming through his guidance. Is it this car? I said, oh, my God, that's the car. Uh huh. And he said, I just bought this car. Oh, boy. Yeah. Like I just, I had had no idea he bought this car. Right. You know, he's like, I had bought this car and he knows how I am. And two days later I get a text and he goes, just that just said one sentence. I sold the car. Yeah. Yeah. I figured he <laughs> <laughs> right. Smart so man to take that seriously. Yeah. 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 Cause, cause he knows, he knows how I am. He says I sold the car and I said, okay, figuring this, this timeline is shut. It's closed. Right. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, so, so I haven't talked to him in years and his mother starts contacting me again, even though I'm like, I have some energetic boundaries with her. I'm just like, right. I'm not going to say her name because I don't want to like out him. Um, yeah. right. But I'm like, they say her name. No, I'm mm. you and you, me and your son, we are, we're good. We've moved on and, so right. no, but right. it was just that, that another, that pull. And then, so I was like, well, I wonder how his dad's doing. Like, I felt like very much something happened with his dad. Mm. So I looked it up and his dad had crossed over a couple months. Like all of this is happening over months where I was unpacking a box and I found the, his dad's Bible. I'm like, oh, I have to, I have to talk to him. Like something's mm. happening. Like something's, yeah. there's something happening here. Yeah, yeah. So that was in the back of my mind. And of course, there's all these different like timelines and multidimensional experiences that I'm having, but I'm just telling, I want to tell a story. So yeah. when I did this last Reiki, um, shamanic, tra a trauma informed Reiki experience, this was out of the this world, like out of this world, um, unexplainable. Mm. There was, I was picking up, I started to have asthma. I started to have really bad asthma and I don't, I don't typically have asthma. I had to get an inhaler. The only person that I know that has asthma like this, an inhaler is my ex. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I started to have that and my ex is, um, my ex comes from lineages, which were that there's just land contracts. It was like all of these ancestral things kind of were happening because yeah. in this Reiki class at the end of the class, there are some really, really gifted people in there that um, are healers and yeah. uh, like death void walkers, um, death doulas, just a he like, just, it was, it was like on a whole other level. Right. And everyone there is was very dedicated to the healing of like intergenerational like racial um trauma mm -hmm. like they had that deeply seated in their heart right. which created this big big experience where we did cross over about 400 indigenous and then like um ancestrally what i picked up just um things that have been done to cultures that are non-white on this land yeah, yeah, yeah. So we crossed over all of these disincarnate spirits because of 
how the deaths had happened um, and move mm -hmm. that through. And I was so surprised by that, just to how much, um, how much was there? Uh, right. Like the, the capabilities of when collect folks come together in collective consciousness, like how much like land work can we, can we do? And right. so I started to go through a deep detox too, even though I'm teaching the class, I, the Reiki had reinitiated, it, it gets, it gets, um, you get it coded back in your system, in your aura again. So yeah. It surprised me too how much that I was going through. And so there was a lot of things happening. And physically, I have this asthma. Yeah. Um, which I don't have asthma. Um <laughs> and and all of these things. And so at, at and at mm -hmm. this time, then I start, I'm also able to access and bring angels and guides like through me shamanically to reunite with um with their loved ones. This is happening right. all at the same time. I'm getting to this long story of this accident because it really is all related. Yeah. So I get to, there's this contract on the land and I'm also working with the element of water. Just intuitively, I'm like, I don't have right relationship with water. In my, there's something that happened in my family line where there was like death through water. Just, mm. just a, it's just like a, an earth balance type of thing that I wasn't, I'm like, I have to get right with my relationship to water. Right. Um, so I knew all of this stuff going into, I had an experience with a client where I had brought her mother back through who had crossed over. And then my accident was the next day. So I had this like really heightened, you know, transpersonal shamanic experience mm -hmm. <laughs> and near death at the same time. Jeez, now, right. so this accident, so my daughter's school is, just a mile from our house and so i get i'm getting into this car and i'm still a little bit almost um the experience the day before was so heightened that i was just like energetically just like oh my gosh so i wasn't i shannon physical form wasn't fully paying all the way attention to the ice underneath a little dusting of snow right 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 so, so this caused uh, me to lose control of the, the car. But what was very interesting was that, and there was like, a, I don't know if you get into like these pockets where it's like a three seconds where I am just filled with the energy of all my guides, internal knowing. It's like, you can see through all the timelines. It's like, mm -hmm. um, some people are like, oh, it's tunnel vision, but it's like actually really expansive. And I've been in a couple of those states before where it's like, almost mm -hmm. like an exit point, but it's like, a, this is a big shift point. Huh. It's like, it almost strikes me as a spiritual Alice in Wonderland syndrome. Exactly. Where everything gets larger or smaller. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and I had such level of discernment as to where to land the car. And I'm feeling these, I'm feeling these energies of the, my guides, my ancestors, angels, all of this with protection and with the land all at the same time. Yeah. I feel, I feel that. So the choices where to, to crash my car were off the side and into a child's park that was down off a, um, a hill, which we right. would have rolled. Wow. And that would have, that would have been not great into a telephone pole, into two cars or over into a Creek. Jeez. I have three seconds and I managed to through all of this and just this deep, deep dropping into like my soul what it felt like yeah land on the curb and so just i hit the curb really hard to the point where i have whip i've had whiplash basically yeah oh man yeah and like a mild concussion um but it was it was something and it was also like i crashed a car but like something else happened here but i had to deal with like yeah the trauma, the humanness, the human nature of it all. And I knew that I would get more guidance as to what really deeply, what the meaning was here. Right. So I dealt with the physical nature of it all. And yeah. Did some trauma processing with my trauma shaman, who I call, you know, my elder. Um, and yeah. it was through the processing. So she does like a combination of EMDR, IFS, shamanism. Yeah. energy all at the same time basically and all the same stuff 
just the basic stuff, you know, how, how you and I kind of operate, right? Like all, all levels, all on, right. all at once. Yeah. yeah. And so it was, as we were going through rounds uh, with the MDR, I'm, I'm seeing stuff and I'm not telling her and I'm just, I'm still, it wasn't put together until for me, it's, it's always correct when it's like, you know, before someone validates it. So I did one round because where I was stuck and my intention with the EMDRs, I just kept getting stuck in the motion of my red car and the, how the crash was. Like my brain was stuck in that trauma. Mm. So one round with that and moved it through. The second round, I see that black car. I haven't thought about this in 10 years. I see that black car. Right. I see that crash. Third round. I see the crash. I see the crash. I see that black car burnt. Nobody lived. Wow. The third round. Then the fourth round, I saw the energetic, um, my protection. Um, all of the guides and stuff were shown. The fifth round, um, showing the the nature of the land contract. And then the, the last, a couple last rounds were like the inner guidance. So yeah. I go through all of these processes and I don't, I only tell her about the beginning and, and the last, because I just, for whatever reason, I was like, I'm going to, this is mine. Yeah. Yeah. This is mine. The um, black cards with the X that yeah. that's what you're talking about. That's yeah. That. Like this is mine. Like this is, I'm not sharing that with you. And so I processed that through for, because I was honoring my trauma and I actually was consciously not wanting to get into the mystical, the spiritual, the transpersonal. I was like, no, I need to process this. My brain and body are processing this. And so we processed and discussed it. And then she said, may I share something that I saw mm. her guidance? She's like you and me where she can pick up on yeah. the, the nature of it all. Yeah. She goes, this wasn't your accident. <laughs> And I was just floored because in that moment I knew whose it was. Right. She says, this wasn't your accident. And she goes, do you know? She goes, this was supposed to happen to someone else in, in your, in the Des Moines area. She right. goes, do you know who that might be? <laughs> she goes, because you collapsed some timelines. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Said, oh, okay. Uh -huh. Uh, right. And then I knew, I knew that because we had kind of played around with the timeline earlier that yeah. there was still this contract with the land, with this, with this accident, you know, he was supposed to leave um, and cross over and we needed, humanity needed him here. So we, from a, a higher level of our being and knowing we had worked through our deep, deep soul connection to collapse yeah. the timelines in order for both of us to stay alive and serve and learn and be right yeah so is it is it your take at this point that what you just went through then could not have been avoided or unsure there's a still a part of me that um there's like a there's a protector part that is very stuck on mistakes and that's what i'm working through and yeah. so that's like the block um, yeah. Yeah. as to avoidance or not, like how mm. much, how many more deep initiations do I have to know who I truly am? Right. Because mm. it doesn't have to be this way. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, my gosh, what a story. I mean, mm -hmm. I guess ultimately you're giving it your full, it's due diligence, your full attention, your full mm -hmm. heart. You want to understand every level of it. Right. So my hope would be that that would move that needle toward, I don't need to keep having scary, uh, you know, collapsing timeline, living out trauma, you know, traumatic events, time mm -hmm. and again, right? Right, right. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. That feels like a, um, and the initiations are always smaller, right? Yeah. And so it feels it feels very true that um, as I have shamanically let go of the martyr, my inner martyr, you uh -huh. know that the letting that go, um, right. that that is going to shift because yeah, 
because that's deeply when I got into the underworld of it all and shamanically for myself traveled through that that's what came about was that okay. it's yeah. like the need, it's like that deep deep uh through trauma that deep need to be um yeah. awakened through deep suffering um that is uh self-inflicted almost you know what i'm saying sure that's yeah, unnecessary sure. rather mm -hmm. right right so like do you see that at all as an archetype archetypal pattern yeah the martyr yeah and it's that's that's one that's deeply within my family lineage and that's, that's, that was, was going to be my next question do you think there's a long trail a long tail of that going way back yeah yeah that's, maybe that's something really that's you're supposed to put an end to that exactly and that's that was my i, I discerned that so early on um that comes through my father's line and um when i one of the ways spirit spoke through to me when i was very young was that you're here to learn through your father, like through his, he's a teacher. Um, and, uh, yeah. like in the opposite fashion. And yeah. so you're not, you're not to be, you're not to end up this way. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, that's a, that's, that was when I, you know, you, you go through these ascensions and descent, you know, it's ascension, just, you know, you, it's, it's, you got to learn how to surf, ride those waves. And so totally. I deeply went into it, and I'm so glad that I contacted my beautiful inner martyr. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, and how can we update this role? Totally, yeah. It's got to start with acceptance and and love yeah. and, and a desire to understand. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I, some somewhere I saw a quote. Let me see if I can find it real quick because it would be important to me to know who who it is that said it but but the statement was that something like a true initiation never ends mm. right yeah um or a true initiation is ongoing that might have been yeah That's uh, i want to say it's like robert anton wilson oh here it is okay i did find it yeah, Robert Anton Wilson, a true initiation never ends. And I don't know the context of that quote. You know, it's just something I happened upon. Yeah. But but, you know, as as with most things, I don't think I happened upon it by accident, you know. No, you did not. <laughs> yeah, but but um so I might look at your whole journey and mine, which mm -hmm. you know have overlap but also very different journeys um as ongoing but do they have to be continuously you know trials by fire and, and no utterly uh painful and 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 uh harrowing no i don't i don't think so if we're continuing to, to learn and integrate you know mm -hmm. to the best of our ability and this is true for anybody right right yeah 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 because there's no there's no getting out of being a human right and and when you have more tools and more access to your higher guidance and because I go into everything when I got COVID, you know, I go into that as a journey. Um, what am I here to learn? What initiation? All of it. You know, I look at things. I am so comfortable with I a lot of folks think we just are here for these transcendental experience. I'm so really comfortable with the underworld and, and, and dropping into that into my support subconscious for folks or people like i don't identify with that your subconscious is the stuff that that we're unaware of that's operating your day-to-day -day experience i'm so but i'm also aware of all of it the upper world the middle world the underworld all at the same time to yeah. me it's all the same truly right. um, but i just get so curious about things um mm -hmm. because i want to expand you know even right. even through like just I'm not just going to brush it off. Oh, this was just an accident because there's, uh, there's more, there's more here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, all like the, the treasure trove of near death, uh, literature, near death experience mm -hmm. literature from people who come back to tell the tale <laughs> of right. what, what they were shown and told and experienced. I mean, if there's any theme that runs throughout it, it's that no accidents are accidents. Right. <laughs> Right. exactly 
Yeah. Oh, I yeah. Near death experiences are some of the my favorite like literature to to deep yeah. to drop into, and I think they're just more accessible for folks, um, so, especially for people that have been through it. And I think a lot of people don't realize that some of their traumas or their experiences are near death experiences slash dark nights of the soul. However, you may identify with that, yeah. um, and we can look at it in a different way. Totally. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I kind of consider the what I look back and think of as a type of a shama of a, a psychic dismemberment experience when I was in like the depths of my temporary dark night madness mm -hmm. and the sort of uh, shamanic psychic dismemberment that I experienced in my one and only ayahuasca journey back in oh. 2016 or 17. Mm -hmm. Both of those were. Uh, no words really there's no words for that dismemberment when you yeah. go through that i want to hear more i'm so curious about like how close to the edge did you get my friend in in those experiences mm -hmm. well i mean yeah they were each very different you know the ayahuasca journey i was not prepared at all no. i mean it, it was an appropriate ceremony it was appropriately run it was legit um not an ally for you yeah i don't know that the timing was right for me although mm -hmm. you know if everything is in divine timing then maybe it went exactly how it was supposed to go but it was yeah. nothing but doom and darkness and despair and just utter misery for eight and a half straight hours yeah um and all the stuff that comes along with that when you when you drink that medicine but yeah. I mean, long story short, you know, clearly I survived it and it took me years to, to try to understand yeah. why it was so, so harrowing. Mm -hmm. And the best I've come up with is that I look back and I think it was a foreshadowing of what was to come for me. Yeah. You know, I've talked about this before in different podcasts and stuff, mm -hmm. but um, it was a foreshadowing. It was giving me a little flavor of like, it's going to get rough. You know, you prepare. I was going to tell you when, but it's this is yeah. it's going to feel a bit like that. So years yeah. later, um, you know, when I when I when everything sort of uh, caved in on me, you know, burnout, midlife, all sorts of stuff, and became this uh, this kind of madness, this breakdown that I just knew was not just clinical this was not a major depressive episode or okay. you know it had elements of that because i had experienced that before in my 20s right. and been working as a therapist for 20 years i know right. what that looks and feels like but this was not that so um but there were so there were i don't know what to say moments periods episodes during where i was in really the depth of that feeling like i'm losing my mind yeah. that that i started to have I don't know if visions is even the right word, just sort of visceral experiences of, of once again, being just taken apart down to yeah. the moon yep. and knowing what exactly that meant. And if I was going to be put back together and when and how, and, and, but I did, you know, it all came back together. And then um, in my most recent um, experience with five grams of, uh, <laughs> Guadalajara mushrooms, which I blogged about. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I was kind of uh, put back together again. You were put back together. I think that that's what's important here is to see the contrast between the two big experiences here and how much you really did put yourself yeah. back together. Yeah, because I think in the interim between that ayahuasca journey mm -hmm. and this, we're talking several years. And, yeah. And everything, my whole life has changed, my whole practice, yeah. my whole person um my spiritual life this initiation process that i'm mm -hmm. in um it's entirely different so um yeah i don't want to i don't want to break down the whole uh mushroom journey it's on it's on my blog if anyone please to read please, about it. please i'm gonna post this blog it is chris okay so i just want to validate that your experience with ayahuasca is like a collective one no one is prepared to see to see yeah. that and it is not comfortable we have this western mindset that healing is comfort and it feels good like i feel good no 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 this is soul work okay yeah. and which feels 
uh, you can't even describe it. These words that we're saying, these things that are coming out of our mouths, just that doesn't describe the the harrowing nature of what you went through. Yeah, I have been through one like that myself. Oh, yeah, I know. Words fail utterly. Words fail. fail. I mean, it doesn't even come close. However, when I the reason that I reached out to you to to have this conversation, which um, I've been just sharing my journey and now we're having a conversation um, <laughs> was because of your skill set, mm -hmm. because I knew a little bit about what you had been through before. And then your like graduation into like the the masterful nature of being with a egolessness experience and uh, having that reparative experience like that is mm -hmm. amazing. It take it can take years and years, and a lot of a lot of people don't come back from from where you went. A lot oh, of folks no. don't. Yeah, I'm, I'm working with some folks who feel like they have not come back from. No, kind of been no. Help them. I and me yeah. too, and I and I want to validate too that that's part of like why you and I are here and doing what we're doing because my my first big experience was that way as well. And which is for a lot of people and and folks get real close to the edge. And you know how I know not through my training. Yeah. Not through school is through. I live through that, too. Right. And so can you. Yeah. Well, I think that's a necessary part of service to be able to put yourself back together. Yeah. And be able to sit with folks as they're going through. Totally. Their process. I mean, I don't believe that that's true with everything like for example with addiction right mm -hmm. I, you know i don't have to have been a cocaine addict no to help, to help somebody no. you know work their way through getting free of that of that beast right no but but i think to really help somebody process and integrate and come back together from uh, a deep deep psychedelic journey i think you do have to you have to. Yeah, you Absolutely. have to have been there. Yeah. You have I, don't think, to. I don't think you have to have, you don't have to be Terrence McKenna. You yep. don't have to have been there 3,000 times, but. <laughs> no, because it can get to be, um, yeah. it can be too much. And I don't identify with that. Some folks want that in, in someone like a psychonaut. And I'm just like, that's not me. Right. Um, I'm really great at really difficult experiences, though. I'm really great at trauma. I'm really great at, you know, integrative medicine, those aspects. But that's just that's just my yeah. niche within that world. Yeah. Um, because it tinges on it's very much the spiritual, too. It's like psychedelic trauma, mental health. But then it, le it leans into um, like the spiritual dimension as well. Yeah, totally. You know, I hadn't planned um, this this journey back in when was it October I think I, I, or November November 12 mm -hmm. um, but it was called it called me it was yeah. calling to me my guides and my guidance were giving me hints and then bigger hints and then bigger hints and I feel just again beyond words just fortunate and blessed for that because it was another experience all the way through even that the, the really scary parts in the beginning mm -hmm of showing me yet again how much i can trust my own guides and guidance i mean right down to when to do it how much where to go for it who to have with me i mean that part was obvious anyway there was to be no one other than my my partner mm -hmm. what um but and and it, it it couldn't have been better except for the fact that it was freezing cold in that damn hut that yeah that was a distraction, but I had to keep letting that go too. Yeah. Um, because I'm just somebody who'd rather boil than freeze. So that was that well, was trying. <laughs> but I kind of did boil when I was taken to the hell realms a little bit. I when yeah. you touched on that, that brought um, when I was reading your blog, I was that was just such uh, I was so tickled. Yeah. Um, because there were some things that you described. I was, and I was so impressed that you had described that you actually brought back with you to actually understand and tell about like that level of skill set of, of the mastery. I was like, whoa, this is a big deal. Um, because it's so difficult to actually get into those hell realms and to, you know, when you go through like the coffins and the underworld and, 
yeah. you start to feel, you know you start getting into all that um oh, i yeah. I was, uh, the imagery, you just really brought that to life and um, this brought a depth to an experience, some experiences that folks are having here and now and not really understanding like where they're at and their being. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. I, know. I mean, again, I attribute it all to that it was meant for me and I was guided all the way through it. You know, I mean, I felt like I was held through that's what i was going to ask i was like you were so cloaked in that and yeah. the holding so that they were actually able to move yeah. you through that because because otherwise you right. can feel like uh i don't know how to say like yeah, you're, you being, lost like you're, you're being banished or you're or you're being punished or you're lost in that realm yeah, and, and a lot of folks bring back a lot of really terrible energy and entities from that because they don't understand how that works yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah no doubt i mean and uh you know you never know what you're gonna get so no, it's you, know. <laughs> roll the dice. you roll the dice into a collective consciousness unity consciousness like here you go this is what's right. next for you right right so it was all profound and I, I tried to describe it as well as I could without it being, you know, 90 pages long on a damn blog post, you know, I could yeah. have gone on and on, but I had to keep trying to keep, keep it, keep it short um, to the point. But, and how do you do that with an experience like that? You I mean, can't. there's so much more there. Exercise yeah. in futility really, but, yeah. but, but the, but the rebirthing part of it, you know, in, in the deep, deep inner earth in the underworld was just wild. I'm still, of course, putting it together. Yeah. You know, still receiving insights and, and um, oh, I just that. even I seeing that. through my work uh, how there's elements of that journey that um, I'm supposed to be drawing on to help me yeah. understand mm -hmm. of what other people are going through, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it keeps unfolding. You'll, you know, you'll be hit with something, as you know, years later, just with the inner knowing of, of what that was or what that meant or a higher meaning of what that was. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you helped explain something um, with one of my journeys that I was like, I couldn't quite grasp. Um, like the coffins and getting into the underworld and then the stifling nature of, of that is, um, it just, it uh it's a lot <laughs> yeah and you know from being in that realm in those real dark realms like mm -hmm. i think i described in in the blog post you know the takeaways for me was being shown that um there's always the possibility of of release or redemption or however ever you want to think of that is ever present yeah you know, nobody's thrown in the dungeon and the keys tossed away forever Right. But each soul has to figure out kind of what got them there, what's keeping them there and what does it take to mm -hmm. to be redeemed or, or released to be able to level up, to move up to the next you know, dimension or level of learning exactly. and soul growth or what have you. You know, exactly. yeah, exactly. Yeah, because it felt like you were guided through to kind of see the some of the inner workings of uh, consciousness, you, you know, all yeah. of them. Yeah. yeah and, and and also in that in that part of the journey you know in those glimpses that i got of these like overlord very dark figures who you know were just quite stationary and sort of uh guard guard-esque um I, I i took away from that the sense among other things the sense that this was this i was being shown that these that dark forces are real and don't get lazy don't get arrogant don't get lazy don't just assume that because maybe you're leveling up in your own spiritual awakening or initiation or whatever don't assume that you're just permanently infinitely protected and nothing can touch you you know nope. so i was like noted <laughs> noted not that i was planning on that but you see it was a good reminder you know yes um it's so true because it's i don't think people understand that enlightenment however you want to word that is a moment to moment experience which can change and your level of consciousness can change you're not in this permanent state 
uh, you know, some some folks are very, 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 very few yeah. <laughs> individuals yeah. stay there, and some and and there are other folks who like bodhisattvas, you know, choose to go through the whole thing and and moment to moment discernment and awareness and and to to be with other people. Yeah. Um, and we do have to be aware. And if you are aware of the the nature of it all, you have to stay aware um, of that. I, yeah. I put protection. I am discerning everything because even if like the amount of sleep, um, if I've got a part that's running my system, mm -hmm. if I'm in a, an environment that's just toxic, you know, like all of these things that the level and quality of the information that I'm getting, and then we've got these tricksters. Mm -hmm. and you don't like you and I both have discerning uh, elements as to, cause, cause someone, cause a, a higher being will come in. It's kind of like, I get it as this clown trickster. Um, <laughs> I'll get that symbol. Sometimes it's me. Sometimes I'm the clown. It's like, you're so silly. Um, and, um, I get that symbol, how I receive information. And uh, like you said earlier, to come full circle in this conversation, you can't fully trust that. Yeah. You can't fully trust that because folks will say, well, I'm channeling spirit, or I'm channeling this and whatever. And then I, I'm a reflector. Okay. So I am like, I pick up on stuff and I'm like, you are not like, this is not, yeah. this is, you are channeling something. I hear you, but do you know how much? How many energies are out there that you can channel? Like, you know what? I can give you a recent example of this that kind of blew my mind. Um, I did a uh, a reading with a with a medium, mm -hmm. and and it was profound. Uh, I mean, it was it was very specific to. Uh, she wanted to know who I would want to connect with that has crossed over, and I knew instantly who it would be. Mm -hmm. And she connected with his soul and her description of him was spot on. Yeah. I mean, mind blowingly spot on. It was the real deal. Yeah. Um, so there was more to it about kind of that he's still sort of stuck and has a lot of shame and regret for how he lived and how he died mm -hmm. and all this, which made sense, but really the description of how he had appeared and, and his personality, I was like, wow, I was yep. really, really impressed. And that was that. I told a good old friend of mine about it. And he took it upon himself to reach out and book a reading with her. And then tells me afterwards, he gives me a summary written of what she brought through to him. And I could be wrong, but I'm telling you, it's just struck him and me as a bunch of lower astral subterfuge gobbledygook. Yeah like none of it made any sense yep and i was like the contrast between the experience i had of what she brought through and this stuff yeah still kind of can't believe it oh i can believe it yeah i can because it's all in their energy field and what they've been connecting to and what they think is higher self or higher knowing in their guides because yeah. i do energy work and when you go along energy mastery even your lifelong guides will will leave if they don't if they don't reach uh, a third heaven or a third layer of consciousness. And even that, you you will lose guides on your journey because you have to have the highest, and you yeah. have to be living within that. And if you have parts running your system, I oh I have played around with this. I'm at a point where I actually play around and test some of these concepts out. Here's here's a fun one. Yeah. Um, I don't really drink. Um, I've had some, when I was very much, um, probably had a CPTSD diagnosis, I was drinking too much. Yeah. And I, now that I've gone and resolved that, like addiction, that's a whole conversation. It was like trauma and coping. Um, sure. I'm not pulled to any of that. Um, yeah. as I've gone through my energy, just training it, um, I'm very much discerning so many things, even with like uh, substances, foods, environments, I can pick up a lot of stuff, which I yeah. couldn't before, but it was all <laughs> overstimulation because I didn't, I identified with it all as if it was me. Right. Now I have this level of discernment, even with the slightest thing as to what is what. Yeah. Um, and so 
if I do drink, I'll have like maybe a glass of wine like twice a year. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And there's levels of discernment because I pick up on so much that I have I'm doing like a whole process when that is when that's happening. Right, right. Yeah. So there was uh I had had like one and a half glasses and I felt this tip over in my own system uh with a friend. I felt a tip over in my own system as to uh oh, something's getting in here. Mm. And and my discernment is down. So for me, I'm so curious that I decided I'm going to journey with this later. I'm going to journey with, with what this, uh, mm. what, what this energy was. Cause I just felt it come in yeah. and my, some of my, um, your field is just weakened. It just is. Yeah. And, um, so I journeyed with it and there was like this, this, uh, the spirit, this, this entity, this alcoholic, not me. I was shown who it was what this energy was getting from from this the state that that i was kind of in and right. i was, was able to, an earthbound like discarnate earthbound, soul? earthbound and um an entity you know not passing through and uh, i was with it and um oh my god the dark nature of the whole thing you know that that came about and uh yeah i mean i i'm just continually impressed with the level of like, what is going on here? Like, what is actually, what's this? And I'm not identifying with that. I'm not identifying with the stuff that was his stuff that yeah. I was able to separate. Kind of yeah. Separate from. Yeah. There's a, there's a separation from, but also like a, I yeah. see you and I'm going to use my, I don't go into all that. I use my guides. I work with various beings beyond let's yes. just say as you sure. do and yeah. and to help help him in his process right and he process my own process but that's that's a separate and an interconnected yeah because we are all all beings are interconnected even these dark really. places, you know there's this interconnected nature and and that that desire on your part to assist in that way in that kind of psychopompic ushering on way has got to have a lot to do with your whole ancestry and lineage, everything that we started talking about today. Yeah. Whereas I'm not aware of that. I don't feel that whole, I don't feel like that's part of my path when something comes in that's not what what I, I think it is or not what it's telling me it is, like I touched mm -hmm. on in the beginning that I experienced last weekend. I would might treat it very much like a part in IFS that's just coming in to kind of try to distract me mm -hmm. and just compassionately say, just move along. And if yeah. I need to ask for help with that, I can do it and it's it's done. Um yeah, there's that element yeah. there too that I have to look at, you know, because it was yeah. like an, there was an ancestral nature, you know, to it too. Um right. that I that I'm very much aware of. I do both. I quite yeah. honestly do both. Cause I have to, if I'm able to see it, I have to look at it. Right. Like, sure, right. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, you know, I'm still learning very deeply um, as to what I'm coming into contact with and right. uh, using what I have, but yeah, it's like that deep, okay. it's like that deep, deep. Uh, yeah. Knowing that. Yeah. You know, we're connected and I mean, in, in, in operating in this realm, whether it's in the way that you do or me sort of anchored in psychology, but bringing in all the transpersonal. I mean, I feel like I'm in kindergarten at best with this. That's exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. Every day, every day, I think I have some mastery over something and it's like, oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Um, yeah. And even when I work with people and I say, well, you know, I learned something, they're kind of shocked, even like healers. Um, yeah. Because I'm like, no, you know, I don't know everything. The nature of uh, the universe is so expansive that I yeah. actually don't want to. I don't want I don't want my ego to think that I do. You know what I'm saying? Because we get trapped with that. Oh, totally. Yeah. I mean, yeah, of course. I, You know, I'm inclined to view that as more as like a collection of protective parts of ourselves that just want to keep us safe. Right. And sometimes one of the ways that they do that is to try to convince us that we know more than we know, you know, so we're not shocked or surprised or, or, or to save face or whatever, you know, so it's sort of interchangeable with the, the classic sort of concept of, of ego, I guess. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, 
Yeah. I mean, this is kind of why I really like the idea of being a cella, you know, a student on the path yeah. is what in some esoteric traditions mm-hmm. they, they would, they would call that, you know, with mm-hmm. the, the ascended master tradition, for example, yeah. you're a cella and you remain a cella until you leave the body. And then you're probably still a cella, <laughs> still yeah. a student, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I definitely feel that deeply. Um, yeah kind of what I've intuitive is just like, I'm a teacher in training, which means I'm an eternal student. <laughs> right, exactly. exactly. I'm a master teacher in training. I don't know where I will land. I don't know how, like how I will land on the, the other side. So I do the best with the tools that I have. But that yeah. means to be a teacher means that you are an eternal student. It's, right. I've learned stuff from our conversation just here today where I'm like, oh yeah, that's another way to kind of look at that. So. You right. just have to be open, even when it's like, well, we're going to share this and uh, look, you know, look at us. Totally. We're, we're supposed to know everything, Chris. You know, yeah, supposed no. to. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> that's how cults get started, right? Like, that's, that's <laughs> kind of like. Oh, we should start a cult. We should. We should start a cult. Do we have any takers? Let's start an email <laughs> list. <laughs> no. no, I don't want to. I no, can't even man. pretend to. I know. Yeah. yeah when well, I was that, young, that could be, we could have a whole nother talk about what maybe we've both learned from working with people that have left cults or, oh. or that are still coming to terms with that they, you know, grew up in a really oppressive, dogmatic, cult-like environment. I mean, it's been a constant for me constant. since moving here and, and living in the South. I'm in the buckle of the Bible belt. So you know, whether it's just fire and brimstone, Christianity, evangelical, or then bona fide cults, you know? Yeah. So I have three things that I know that we should talk about. That is one. We have to. The, um, that is one, the transpersonal nature of like both of our work, how you pick up on parts and like for me, it's like those outer chakras, like those beyond the seven chakras, like how I sense that. Yeah. Um, some of those transpersonal parts, that's part you, part ancestry, part starseed, part, you know what I'm saying? Like part mm-hmm. interdimensional nature of that and ETs. Yeah. Um, some of the, some of the, I know that, may I say, I know, I know that you have a contract with the Pleiadians. Oh, I know I do too. Yeah. And yeah. two others. My what I've gotten consistently when I've inquired is that I have three separate cosmic culture, yeah, family or soul lineage. What uh, are the other two? Mantis and Arcturian. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting with the Syrians right now. Pleiadians are another one, and there are others that I can't. I'm not able to. Mm. It's like one, like one will come, and it's like. Um, I have to establish more of a relationship or there has to be more of a, a reason. And I have to use discernment because I don't know. I don't know. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Saying- I do. And I'm, I'm also think I know what that one is. Okay. So instead of just blurting it out, let me ask you, would you want to know what I'm getting on it? I can and- feel, I can feel that. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me let me sit with it and check it when I do my work later, mm-hmm. and I'll 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 hit you up about it if you want to know. Yeah, I and, I, I, and, I, could, and I could always be wrong. So there's you could that. be you could yeah. be, but my internal guidance has been a do not. This is not do not do not what. It's like do not. There's there's learning here, but it's not establish some really good other um guidance so that you know so me i know what to ask and look for and be with yeah um because there's some that i'm getting into where they're passing information that's not even verbal i'm getting a hit with like um uh just a collective like energetic energetic download that is happening um and i trust it uh and, it, and it's and it's good information because I have some long term trusted um, guides that I work with that are of the the right. LOM right that right. Are of, that that I work with and so I have to tr- do, I use them as my translators to to be able to to discuss and discern things that maybe me yeah I cannot 
my higher self even is like more just like, hey, can you translate some of this? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. 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 Well, maybe we have just set the stage perhaps for an, another talk in the future. I think so. Cool. Because with stuff that's happening, there is uh, there are beings that are deeply connecting because of like the war that are reaching out to folks that a lot of folks have picked up on. And it, I think it's going to get a little wild. Oh, I know. Already is. It's a wild world, mad, mad, mad world, but a beautiful world. Much beautiful and With that quote for all its sham and drudgery, it's still a beautiful world. Yes, it is. Ask yeah. some, somebody anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll have to continue some of this on and yeah, indeed. Yeah. Let's do it. What okay. a great chat. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Okay.